In this video, I'm gonna show you the exact settings that I use when I'm exporting my edits from Adobe Premiere Pro and a hack that you can use on Instagram to get the best quality possible when you are uploading your videos to social media. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography. And like I said, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a couple of hacks to get the best quality that you possibly can when you are putting your videos on social media. I'm gonna use some of my work as a sports videographer, some of my basketball videos as like examples as we're going through this. Um, but yeah, you can really apply this to like any type of content and this is just going to make your video look better when you share it on the internet. So first let's start in Premiere Pro. All right, so first let's go over my export settings in Adobe Premiere Pro and I'll kind of explain like what different export settings I'll use for different types of videos. But for the most part, these are the export settings that I use for most of my edits. You can see here in Premiere Pro, I've got like a basketball edit loaded up here. So when I'm making a video that looks kind of like this, where I have like lots of fast motion, like a typical sports video, I'm usually using export settings that look something like this. So the first thing I do is I come under the effect panel and I apply my QT Gamma Compensation LUT, which is basically a LUT that makes the colors in Premiere Pro here actually look the way they look in my editor when I export it. Just kind of like it's a color space thing. I'm not gonna get into detail about this. I'll like link an article below that explains like why you need this LUT and what it does. But if you're ever having issues where you're exporting from Premiere Pro and the colors in your editor just don't look like the colors on your export, like it's not, it doesn't match up, this LUT might help you. So go read that article. I'll have a link down there for you. But I usually apply that QuickTime Gamma Compensation LUT and then I'll also come to the video settings. And of course I'm clicking use maximum render quality box and the render at maximum depth box right here. Then coming a little bit lower, you can see there's a bitrate settings. So you can choose constant bitrate, variable bitrate one pass or variable bitrate two pass. So to kind of explain these constant bitrate, we'll just pick a bitrate and use that bitrate to encode your whole video, regardless of what that video is, regardless of how many bits may be needed in one section or another, and regardless of like the complexity of the movement in the video or how static it is. So I don't usually use this. I actually usually use variable bitrate two pass and the difference between VBR or variable bitrate one pass and two pass is that one pass, the encoder is basically like assigning bits to different parts of your video on the fly. Whereas with VBR two pass, the first pass where like the encoder goes through the video, it's kind of understanding which parts of your video have more movement and are more complex and are gonna require more bits as a result and which parts are more static and are going to require less bits as a result. And then on the second pass, it's actually going through and like assigning those bits and making sure that the more complex parts of your video with more frantic movement and changing backgrounds are accounted for and the parts that are more static where the background is staying the same and the camera's not moving that much are not being assigned as many bits so that your file size can stay a little bit smaller. So that's basically how that works. So I always pick VBR two pass. It does take longer because the encoder, like the exporter has to actually go through and like process your video twice, but it makes the result look better. And if you're gonna spend so much time working on a video, then I think that you want to like wait that extra time exporting and make sure that it looks as good as possible. And I usually set my target bit rate to 20 megabits per second and my max bit rate to 25 megabits per second. You can go higher than this if you want, but this looks pretty good for me. I've just found these numbers to work for me. No really rhyme or reason behind them. I don't even remember where I got this from, but my stuff comes out looking good when I use these numbers. So I just use them. Don't ask me more than that. I, it's really just trial and error for me but that's the settings that I use. I'll sometimes mess with the audio if there's like certain specifications that I need for like certain outlets. Like just recently I had to export a video that was gonna play on like a Jumbotron and they all needed a file that had mono audio. So under channels here, you can see there's like 5.1 stereo and mono. I had to switch this to mono so that like whatever they used to like put the video on the Jumbotron could like process the video properly. Um, but I usually don't touch that. And if I'm exporting a YouTube video where it's just like a talking head the whole time, like I'm sitting down doing a tutorial and like basically it's a shot like this, where it's me, my head in the middle, the background is still, the camera's on a tripod and we're just going like that for a few minutes. 
Then if I'm like, well, sometimes I'll still do VBR two pass just because like it doesn't hurt. But sometimes I'll just do VBR one pass if that's the case. And I'll set it to like 15 megabits per second and just let it roll. And because the camera's still in the background's not moving and like I'm pretty much in the same place in the frame the whole time, the video usually still comes out looking pretty good and it's a faster export. So if I need to, I will do faster exports for stuff like that. But usually VBR two pass, target bit rate 20, max bit rate 25, use maximum render quality and render at maximum depth. Anyways, let's get into that Instagram hack that I was talking about that will give you higher quality uploads to Instagram pretty much effortlessly. Yeah, I know, it's kind of crazy. Anyways, let's get to that. All right, now let's talk about that Instagram hack that you can use in the app by just changing a couple settings to get Instagram to give you higher quality uploads. So you can see in the app here, I am just on like my regular profile and you click the three bars up top here to get into your settings and then you just click settings and you go down to account settings and within account settings, you wanna click on data usage. And this gives you two options is use less cellular data and there's also high quality uploads, which word for word, Upload higher quality videos on cellular or Wi-Fi. Additional processing time may be required due to larger file sizes. So yeah, you literally just need to click the button on Instagram that like says upload higher quality videos. I was like shocked when I found that button. Like I can't believe Instagram just has a button that basically makes your videos higher quality and just takes longer to process. Like obviously I want that to happen. I don't know who wouldn't, but I guess this is turned off by default because Instagram just like doesn't want to have to like deal with higher quality content. But anyways, go turn that on. It's definitely going to help. And that combined with the export settings that I showed you in Adobe Premiere are going to make your videos look a whole lot better on the internet. Anyways, if you got value out of this video, then please make sure to subscribe to my channel because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis. And I'd love to have you around for that. If you have any other questions about this video, if you just want to say, hey, anything like that, drop it in the comments. I'd love to get back to you down there. Anyways, that's going to be all for this one. So until next time, peace.